who is programs coordinator ICS SP and we are going to be having this broader discussion about what's the space of women in the digital um, uh, what is the space of women in the digital market in innovation and technology especially in line with this year's theme where it was about technology and women karibu sana Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank before you so we before uh, we get into talking about the digital space and you know yeah, women and their and their place in digital era, please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Yeah, then we can get going. Great. Thank you for having me here today. My name is Morino Chieng, and as you have mentioned, I am the programs coordinator for investing in children and their society. I am a wife and a mother, and I also want to take this opportunity to wish all the women happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Great. Day to you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> My co-host and I were talking, and we were like, eh, we, we seem to have Girl, Girl Child Day, and we have International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And now when she mentioned it, that's when I was thinking, Oh, okay. So what's the difference between the Women's Day and the Girl Child Day, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> anyway, le let's, start, let's start this conversation from this point here. Please help us define what does digital mean? Because for me, different people understand digital innovation and technology to mean different things. Mm -hmm. So would you care to um, elaborate or probably just explain to us what does it mean to talk about digital in innovation and technology? Well, thank you for that, for that question. Um, and I would define this in the simplest way. If you look at the digital space, then we're basically talking about uh, technology. Uh, and looking at um, today's era, we would all say that we're in the you know, era of technology. So perhaps that means exploring all forms of digital platforms. You know, we have phones, we have radio, we have television and all that. And so looking at the information era that we are also in currently, that means that a lot of information is shared on you know, social media platform, through the radios, through the TVs. And we know information is power, you know. Mm -hmm. And basically talking about innovation, then things keep changing. And so there is need to then start thinking about what are some of the new ways of doing things, you know. How do we get to think differently and you know we say technology keeps on changing and as I was thinking about this I remembered when I first get a hold of a phone you know it was huge and <laughs> you are not allowed to hold yeah. it you know what that meant yeah but then you see today things have changed things are different and that tells you how much um, the world of technology keeps on you know revolutioning so we need to then think about um, how do we adapt to these changes and then as we adapt to these changes how much is the space open for the women especially to be allowed to innovate what is the level of exposure mm -hmm. for the girls uh, who then grow into becoming women you know what are the opportunities that are availed for the women to then be able to explore is that space open enough uh, you know f to allow women to explore do they have opportunities even in terms of access mm -hmm. to resources because we could be here and having this conversation and whereas we know that much as the technology penetration could be at 100 or 99 percent as we speak but that might not be the case because then there are different areas where women might not even have access to basic things like a phone you know and so when we're talking about that that what does that mean for the children they are raising mm -hmm. So it's a whole lot and it's a continuum and you just need to look at it holistically. And I like what you're saying that you're going all in to just look at how has this space been. And so that means then we need to celebrate mm -hmm. the progress that we have made. But also there is need to just recognize that there are still gaps, you know, that then we need to ensure that we bridge. And so the conversation we're having today is just to look at what have been done in that space and then what still remains undone and what then needs to be put in place in terms of resources, in terms of investment and also efforts. Yeah. You, you've highlighted something quite important that I'd want to um, ask you. Do you feel women are given the same standing as men when it comes to the digital space? <laughs> I know, and um, that's been very controversial. I have been listening to conversations around, mm. you know, why we're celebrating women, and I've even had people say that at 
think we are over celebrating this because <laughs> <laughs> people feel like women have been given uh, a lot of enough opportunity yeah. and now they feel like it's it's too much it's a lot but i don't think that's the case and i draw this back from the work that we do with the children mm -hmm. and um we work with schools you know and looking at um, also working with parents and how children are raised then that gives us an insight of what really happens in the community and now um, we know in the competency-based curriculum we're looking at stem subjects there is a reason why there is an emphasis to that mm -hmm. because if we're looking at um, opportunities for access to digital platforms and technology then we realize that that has to start from somewhere you know you don't get that opportunity when you're already old so that has to be instilled in you at a younger age and when we look at even some of us in our era growing up you know there is a space that was cut out for for women mm -hmm. and then you grow up like that and if you don't get exposed enough to be able to change that perspective then you're likely to raise your children in the same manner and so what that means is that then um, aspects of technology and innovation were mm -hmm. mostly left for, you know, the men, because those are STEM subjects, those are mm -hmm. aspects of science and technology is not for the women, it's supposed to be naturals, we're supposed to be homemakers. Mm -hmm. And so what that means for you is that you need to be reserved, you need to hold back, you don't <laughs> need to <laughs> come out and yeah. say, hey, I am here. So the space is not the same to answer your question. I still feel like um, we still have a responsibility in terms of how we socialize our children and that means then our female uh, children how do we teach our girls to embrace some of these um, subjects how do we then um, allow them access these spaces and then how do we nurture them how do we support them and it starts from the family but then some of these things we also have to influence mm -hmm. them at the policy level because you can do well um, as a parent but then when the child gets out there, how much is the bucket open for the girls and the women? How competitive is it for the women? And I still feel like women have to do a lot more, you know, and even those who make it to those particular spaces, we still feel, because I know the conversation has been that there are many women, but how many is many? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Good question. could we get the percentages so that we're able to then justify that if you say there are many women, then how many are they and how does that you know compare so still i feel like it's skewed and um a lot needs to be done in terms of um socialization in terms of how we parent our children mm -hmm. and also in terms of um and i'm glad about the competency-based curriculum because then that opens the space already for those who wish mm -hmm. to take up mm -hmm. uh, stem subjects which then exposes them to aspects of engineering, technology, and all that. And then even at the policy level, how is the market space available? Is it easy for a digital innovator, for example, who's a woman, to penetrate that space? How does that compare to, to the man? Perhaps looking at the level of aggression that is needed in that field, do we have that? And we have seen, and we thank the women who've gone before us, because they've done a good job to just uh, break the ceiling. Uh, but then there is need to hold the hands of those who are still coming up and just support them. So I still feel like um, a lot needs to be done for the women. You said that, <coughs> and I've remembered something I saw on, when was it? Just this week. Mm -hmm. And I saw it on LinkedIn. This, this guy had posted, is it a guy or a lady? I, don't want, I can't remember particularly, but it was a big, a big farm, so I don't want to, to mention. Okay. So this person mentioned, I, I posted this woman's photo and said, everyone is out here interviewing the CEO, the, the, the CEO of that company, mm -hmm. not knowing it was a tech company. So not knowing that this is the woman who, this is the lady who's come up with that idea and birthed it. Mm -hmm. And the CEO now is the one making it an appearance in all the interviews, mm -hmm. you know, and no one is actually recognizing the fact that the CEO is just a face of the tech, of this, of, of this tech company. Exactly. But this is the woman who made this. And I was like, mm -hmm. how many more women are out there who have done big projects or who have done big things? But not because it was, you know, especially <laughs> there's this notion people have that when you're behind keyboard and that a keyboard and a desktop yeah. you are faceless mm -hmm. you are nameless yeah. you are identity less yeah. identity less or so everything less like you know there's that perception what do you think about that um hmm. 
it is a sad thing. I, I think for me, it's it's the way we are told that you need to hold back. You need to be reserved. You don't need to come out strong mm. because then, um, and, and, and I know this is very controversial, but yeah, because you're supposed to be submissive. And so mm. then that means that um, there is just a level that you can go. You don't, you don't go too much, you don't mm -hmm. go all in. So like the example you're giving right now, you see um, there is someone who has birthday idea. So that means then they know what it means to drive it and they're able to think through it and even to take it to an mm -hmm. advanced stage. But then um, because you're told to hold back, you know, our money is supposed to be reserved. Do you know you're supposed to sit this way? You're not supposed to climb trees. And, 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 and as we continue to grow up, and mm. if you look at the way we, ladies are raised, your space continues to shrink, mm -hmm. you know, as you continue to grow up. You remember as a young child, you could play with the boys, you could do all these things. But then as you grow up and get into adolescent stage, then your space starts to shrink. So there's a way you expect to, you're expected to behave. There is a way you're expected to carry out yourself. And that kind of limits your space. You start being very conscious about what you're doing. You start being conscious about how you behave around people. And, and somehow that interferes with your way of thinking. You're not becoming open-minded. You're not supposed to be as outspoken as you should have been. And so what that means is as you continue to grow up, this is ingrained you know, in your system. So that um, when you have an opportunity to feel like, um, I don't think this is something I need to do, perhaps let me go around the path and you know, have someone do it, which should not be the case. And that is why, you see, what I'm saying is that whereas women have gone to school, for those who've had the opportunity to, and they already have the required skills, but still there is a, an element of holding back because there is still a way the society expects us to behave. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that really has nothing to do with you as an individual. Because for you, you know that, yes, I can do it. You're very confident about yourself. But sometimes you have to make a trade-off between if this is to break even, then what is the strategy that I need to use? Mm -hmm. Perhaps go through a known path you know, to ensure that my idea succeeds. So perhaps that woman, her uh, thoughts were around, if this is going to be successful, then there has mm -hmm. to be a man face um, fronted and not a woman face. Because perhaps there is something that comes with a woman face that will just make Mm -hmm. the business not to, to do well. And those are some of the things that we still need to highlight and continue having the conversation to ensure that we become the authentic us that we are supposed to be, yeah. How is technology transforming, um, transforming the woman's life and the digital space? in very many ways mm -hmm. because um, remember I started by saying that information is power and um, lack of access to it therefore means that you do not get to know so many things mm -hmm. and um, then looking at now the woman right now we have you know we can talk about I started by talking about even basic phones mm -hmm. We know that information is shared. Like right now, we a lot of trade happens through the phones, and um, even businesses, the work, the workspace now. Uh, so perhaps to start by looking at that woman in the village, you know, a basic phone means a lot in terms of are they able to listen to news, you know, because some of these basic phones, at least they have access to radio. Mm -hmm. So are they able to get information? A lot of advertisements now are done on, on radio, on TVs, and they could range from different things because when you're looking at the um, empowerment for women, we're talking about health, we're talking about education, we're talking mm -hmm. about economic mm -hmm. empowerment, we're talking about innovation, mm -hmm. technology, mm -hmm. and all that. And... Um, if I give an example of health, which is really very basic, sometimes they might not just know how to access um, health information, what is it that they need to do. And so that woman who is <coughs> able to listen to radio, uh, a health advertisement on perhaps vaccination of a child, is able to raise their child mm. differently mm. from the one who do not hear any information. Maybe if there's a medical camp that is happening somewhere and that information is advertised, then they're able to hear and they're able to support their children. Mm -hmm. But that's just at the information level. And also for themselves as the women, 
the call be a product, you know, mm -hmm. now we're talking about Women Enterprise Fund that the president highlighted and all that. How would they know? Because they belong to, you know, the, the small charmers, but how would they know that there are bigger opportunities that are able to help them scale up from where they are mm. to move to, to another level? How do they access some of these resources? So that's part of very important information that women can access. But also we look at phones as gadgets for communication, but we also know that mm. they are our banks, you know, the uh, applications that we use, the MPS, you mm. know, the mobile money uh, aspects that we have. So the, that's part of economic empowerment. They go to the market, perhaps they make a sale of the products that they're growing in their farms. They're able to deposit that money. It's safer. It's safer there, but they're also able to do uh, certain uh, financial transactions. And that is important because we have known situations where you come back with hard cash money home mm -hmm. and then you're told, better your person. You know? <laughs> So true, so true. <laughs> you know? So when the women have it in their phones, I mean, it's safer. It, it's mm -hmm. safer for them because then they're able to um, invest. Mm -hmm. But also, basically, we're impulse buyers, not to say in a wrong way. <laughs> so the, <laughs> so true. the moment you have cash, cash money, you know, you're mm -hmm. likely to perhaps not plan for it very well. And part of what we teach our parents is now how to do financial planning, how to organize your finances mm -hmm. and your resources and how to plan for emergencies, which sometimes they're not able to do because of those gaps that come with cash. So having that as a bank is also very important. Uh, but also how we now engage our children, you know, uh, because we know that, uh, especially when you look at during COVID, there was a shift in terms of learning and then there was digital learning and who was supposed to support the children? It was the, the, t the parents mm -hmm. because the teachers were mm -hmm. not there. Assignments were sent. So that even meant that then we bring in aspect of innovation where we have different uh, types of phones, the basic phones and then now there are phones where a parent is able to access internet. So are they even aware of how to utilize that? Do they know that as well? I think it gets to a point where it's not just enough to have a basic phone for communication. Mm -hmm. So that really changed a lot in terms of how we view technology because we realized that learning could still continue. But parents then had a role to play in supporting their children. And all that, you know, is um, the role of technology and the role of innovation in how parents are also able to support their children. And when I talk about parents and because International Women Day, I might want to be very specific because a lot of times it is the women who are going to spend I'm not sure 100% of the time with the children, yeah. but highly likely because from the time um, the child is born to the time they go to school, we are trying to break that. But still, if you look at the number of parents' meetings, if you compare the number of male parents and the female parents, mm -hmm. you highly realize that a lot of those people who are attending are the female parents because... Um, we were having a conversation with the fathers and they were saying them they do the hardware stuff and then the women will do the software. So the hardware is they pay school fees perhaps and ensure yeah. that things are running and mm -hmm. the rent is paid, but the small things of Just, going to school, yeah. preparing children, and that's the role of the women. And well, we are not complaining, <laughs> <Yeah>. but... <laughs> But what we are saying is then that means that it was the female parents who are in the day-to-day mm. -day lives of the children. And because we are saying uh, initially that we have been behind, if there are resources to be distributed, we know that um, even when phones were introduced, for example, it was the fathers would have the phone mm. and then slowly then you'd buy you know the mom the phone and and growing up uh, for us uh, radio ilikuwa baba you know yeah. you could the news mm. <laughs> so true so so true you you see yeah. so i mean very basic things that are happening at the household level but have a greater impact so and uh, then how does that come into play if perhaps the mother had a basic phone and the father has a, an internet, a phone that could access internet, mm -hmm. and then it's the mother who is at home with the child, and then they need to support the child to do their homework, mm -hmm. you know. Are, are they even trained enough to, to handle this? So children suffered, you know, in the long run. For those whose parents could not be able to, to support them. And those are some of the things that when we take a deep dive into, then we still realize that really a lot has to, to be done. And that's why then technology becomes very important mm -hmm. for the women because of their role in the, in the family and in the society. 
Oh, thank you. Um, now, let me get to a touchy su subject. Um, online gender-based violence is, is one of, when we talk about matters digital, we can't fail to talk about online gender-based violence, which has become a form of actually, a form of gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. So how can information, communication and technology be made safer mm -hmm. for women especially in the fight against gender-based violence, cyberbullying, impersonation, doxing, all that. Body shaming. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> and actually, it's a thing, yeah, you know? It is. Actually, I will probably, maybe someone is listening and they're like, what are they talking about? Mm. I've never heard those things. Probably start from what is online gender-based violence now mm. to what are the safer ways, mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. And I think you have done a good job in terms of just giving examples of uh, what that means. So online uh, gender-based violence is, but we talk about gender and we talk, there's nothing really engendered about violence. And <laughs> we always stand out and say violence is, is violence. But then when you talk about gender, then it means you're going through that particular form of violence just because you're a woman, mm -hmm. now that we're talking about women. Not because you deserve it, not because there's anything wrong you have done, but just because you are a woman. Mm -hmm. And that could take different forms. And uh, sometimes it is perpetrated by men, and sometimes, unfortunately, it's even by fellow women. And sometimes that becomes a, a difficult situation to handle. So whereas we're saying that technology is a good thing, but we have seen it happening in terms of uh, impersonation, you know, false accounts are created and run in your name and by the time you know it a lot of damage has been done and you're not sure if now do I need to counter this where do I even begin you already have a bad name uh, sometimes it's uh, and when you're talking about even online uh, sexual exploitation you know mm -hmm. for for children and even for uh, teenagers and we could also be talking about body shaming you know so the digital space is a good space and we appreciate but then um, that does not mean that it has been very safe. There's a lot of uh, good things that have come out of it, but then also we are still able to point out to the bad and the likes that we are mentioning. And so I think it is important that the space is made safe for the women. The space is made safe for everyone. And for me, this really takes me back to the social morals, the value systems. Um, because if it doesn't sit well with me to perpetrate something for a person, I wouldn't check that online, you know. Mm -hmm. So what does my values say um, about what I want to do? How does my values inform the actions that I take? And that starts with individuals. And where do individuals come from? Individuals come from society. And then the society is made up of mm -hmm. families. So really takes us back to the basic unit of the society and where we have families. So how are we raising our children? What are the value systems that we are promoting within the family uh, setup? Because you realize that there are things that you were raised knowing that even as an adult, they're not departing away from you. You keep on thinking, this is how I was raised. You know, This is how I was told things happen. This is who I am. This is who I am. So it really does not matter. The space where you are exposed to, that remains in you. And I think that is where the emphasis needs to be put before we even go ahead um, and talk about policies and uh, you know, talking about systems and, and online safety and all that. So I think we need to work from where things begin. And we need to begin from the family, from the communities. What are the value systems that we are currently promoting? And then looking at the situation as it is right now, do we think that something has gone wrong? Then what could this be? And what then do we need to, to do? So perhaps is it in the way we are bringing up our children? Is it in the way um, the, the, the systems around the child, because we know that the child exists at home, the child exists in school, and the child exists in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. So how are the systems around the child uh, playing to support this child to promote those values, you know? And, and um, uh, we always think about how initially children were raised to believe that I belong to the community. So you'd really know that as long as there is any adult around, they're responsible adults. Is that mm -hmm. the same situation right now? What do we need to do? 
because then it, 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 it might be that I'm growing up in a family, but that's not all. How is the society supporting? Mm -hmm. And because you realize that sometimes you can raise your child and as parents and as mothers with certain values, but then the moment they start going to school, you'll always realize they'll come back home and there is something that you realize is very unique that you're not promoting your family. And then you start asking yourself, so where is this coming from? Mm -hmm. And then you realize, if I don't do my role as a mother and mother B and father B, mm -hmm. then we are still not succeeding. Yeah. Because I can do my best to raise my child in the way that I should, but if another parent does not do the same, then there is still that influence mm -hmm. that, that happens. So for me, that is where I would want us to do well in terms of uh, looking at the value systems. But then when we go to uh, how we expose our children to technology, do we just assume that they will learn it? Uh, is that guided even as children are introduced to aspects of technology? Because it's these children who grow up to become adults. And then if the process of growth is not adequately guided, then what happens is that then there is um, improper utilization of mm -hmm. that digital space. So perhaps just knowing that what are the confines in which I need to utilize the digital platform. And then now we go to um, the policy space, you know, as we continue to innovate, uh, what are the safety measures that we are putting in, in yeah. place? Yeah. Because there'll always be outliers, you know, exactly. you have done your best, yeah. you have continued to sensitize, you have continued to uh, provide security information. But there'll always be those people, there'll always be those opportunities where there'll be um, an undesired behavior. And so that then calls for a policy implementation that as we innovate, mm -hmm. what are the policies that are guiding us as a nation? Um, so, so, so then that would mean that, um, and, and, and I think perhaps talking about sanctions would be good, but um, I always prefer to talk more of prevention than, than response mm -hmm. because response is expensive, damage is already done and you yeah. cannot take it back yeah. and all that. So even as we develop our policies, we need to consider policies that are more oriented towards prevention uh, rather than uh, response. But then we know where we are at right now, we are more responsive <laughs> than, than, than preventive. So I think if some of these things that we're talking about, value systems are enhanced, communities well sensitized, and then looking at also uh, the policy level, policies are implemented adequately and to focus on prevention, then we're likely to have some of these um, online gender-based violence, just to know that violence is wrong and it's, yeah. it's not supposed to happen to anyone, whether you're a woman, whether you are a man, yeah. Wow, that's quite compact and comprehensive. Um, how can women be supported in digitizing their businesses? Because that's something you mentioned yeah. as you were as you were as you were talking about mm -hmm. um, not really about gender based violence, but among the very first things you mentioned and the importance yeah. of technology. Yes. Yeah. When you mentioned it I I picked it up. I wanted to ask um, how can women be supported to uh, digitize their businesses? Mm -hmm. Well, there are, um, I think, few or there could be more ways in which women can be uh, mm -hmm. supported. But um, first, I think, is the exposure that we talked about. Because if you lack the exposure and the awareness that um, I can utilize digital platform to enhance my business, then you're not going to utilize mm -hmm. it in the first place. Mm -hmm. So I think we start from knowing that um, this resource is available for mm -hmm. me as a woman to to utilize and because a lot of times uh, we have only um, perhaps known that you can engage in small trade because um, you see when you're talking about the women who are supposed to be supported I'm looking at that woman mm -hmm. perhaps in the village mm -hmm. who's just trying to make ends meet and uh, what is her level of exposure how much can she access and even looking at the resource base and all that so I think getting them to know that this is important is, is key. And uh, that information can always be provided by partners. We know mm. uh, because we work with, in partnership with different government ministries, there's a social development department that has a unit on you know, registering groups and all that. And that's what we do because then they're able to come down to the communities 
provide that information that uh, they need in terms of what is the process, how can they register, how can they access um, finances and resources, and what are those resources that are available. So getting mm. to know that information, for me, is the first step. Mm. And then the second step now is uh, the digital training. Because um, remember what you're saying is that growing up, you're told your place is perhaps in the kitchen. This is what you're cut out for. You know, this is what you need to do. So um, for that lady who wants to explore that space, it is then important that they get the training. Mm -hmm. Where do they start? How do they utilize it? And in the past few years, and to show you that we've made strides, I, I worked in an Mpesa after finishing form mm -hmm. four. <laughs> yeah. So um, when the women came to withdraw money, mm -hmm. they would hand you over their phones. <laughs> and then <laughs> you're like, just withdraw, you know, have the agenda. And then they're like, yeah. you know. So <laughs> what that means is that they would not know where to access yeah, that, um, that application, where to go, and then that exposed them a lot because then you need to get to a place where they need to put in their pin. Mm -hmm. And then you give them their pin, they tell you, uh, just input. And then they have to tell you. And imagine how many points they have to mm -hmm. withdraw money. And then they have to keep on telling everyone their pin. So there were a lot of money was stolen mm -hmm. from the women. And this is their hard earned money, you know, yeah, because it's yeah. from their businesses. So that training, as basic as it sounds, is very, very important, especially for the women who are going to use this as their banks. Um, and then trainings on other applications, perhaps how to make money online, uh, depending on the cadre. So perhaps if it's a village woman who just wants that to trade mm -hmm. and to get their business, then perhaps give them that sufficient information for the size of their business. And then if you look at uh, perhaps those who want to work online and all that, mm -hmm. what is the training on the different applications that they need to use and all that. And then now once we have done the training and we know what we need to do, then now we can talk about access. Yeah. Okay. So um, how do we access? How do we uh, get, if I need a computer, how do I access it? If I need um, a machine, for example, if I need mm. to have a studio and to do my recording mm. as part of my talent, then how do I do it? So for me, access, which is largely uh, discussed, mm. comes really after the exposure and and the training and then now we increase access and i know a lot has happened in terms of providing funds for the development organizations that are working with the women mm -hmm. to provide funds and, and 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 computers to um some of these beneficiaries that we are supporting and that is a way to just help them because perhaps they might not have the resources that are required for the materials or for the gadgets that they need to to, to trade and so providing that kind of access would also be a way to support the women to, mm -hmm. to ensure that they are able to, to utilize technology, mm -hmm. but also just the conversation that you're having around safety. So how do we then ensure that they're able to use it and use it safely? Yeah, so, okay. yeah. I'm, I'm being told time is up, but I really want to ask you one, at least two important questions. Yeah. One, how would you relate the president's um, speech in 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 the theme of this year how would you relate it to wanjiko the common man and you know mm -hmm. how one who probably doesn't understand the big terminologies we were using and what happened mm -hmm. how would you relate that well i think it goes back to where i started when you're talking about access to digital platforms we're talking about b women being allowed to mm -hmm. innovate, mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> I agree with you. Those sound like very big terms and might not make sense. Or perhaps in the way they are put, mm -hmm. we think that's high up there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just for those who've gone to school and yeah. uh, they have degrees and they are living in the cities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But if I bring it uh, down to really the common mananshi, I think it starts from how we're raising the children, um, what are the small opportunities that are available to my level, you know, as, as a common mana inchi. Mm -hmm. And going back to what is it that I need to have for my level. So perhaps if it is information that I need, then what kind of platforms perhaps I need to, to have access to, mm -hmm. to be able to, mm -hmm. to get that, that information. But also, um, 
to the commoner for me that meant therefore that now we need to start thinking about how we're starting to have more open conversations around digital um, innovation and technology so that it doesn't remain in the confines mm. of tech people because uh, a lot of times when you hear about technology then you think it's really um, a very complicated issue. So how do we simplify? For me it means then simplifying some of this information to the level where anyone is able to, to understand. So perhaps breaking this down uh, to the different levels would be very key for me. And so when you're talking about perhaps the uh, enterprise fund, when you're mm -hmm. talking about uh, digital marketing, when you're talking about online banking, you know, what that means for us is to, if you're talking about online banking, then what are the forms of online banking and who is able to access and what are the basic mm -hmm. perhaps documents or requirements that you yeah. need to have to access that so that it doesn't look like it's, it's, it's up there, you know. And just simplifying some of these processes, you know, so that then we all uh, we all in and taking it a day at a time. Yeah. Last question: um, Paint us an image of where you see a woman or a, a woman in the digital space five years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, first, I am glad, and for the Kenyan woman. Um, it was a good thing that and because you're asking five years and we just had a new president mm -hmm. coming in and it was very good to see him take leadership in that and um, that meant therefore that uh, there is good political will for the woman to um, explore and even excel in the space of technology. And remember, like I say, I see it now like something already into the system because when I started, I talked mm -hmm. about the competency-based curriculum mm -hmm. that now emphasizing on, you know, focusing on either STEM subject or social subjects. So mm -hmm. again, it will be a way of also encouraging that within the education system. Mm -hmm. And so when we have political goodwill and then the systems and the structures uh, are also supporting, then I see um, more women, you know, coming up uh, and belonging to, to that space. I see more innovation, you know, because then there's no one who's going to sit back and say, hey, I think I need to hold back. Yeah. So a lot of people coming up and um, being able to put it out there, what, what they have. You know, innovation is about trying. Mm -hmm. If it fails, yeah. fine, no, not holding back because you fear failure. Mm -hmm. But that will provide an opportunity to try things out. And, and I believe also in terms of investment of resources, because when we have political goodwill, innovation requires a lot of resources, you know, to be invested. You need to be able to test and see what, what is able to succeed. So I believe that will be an opportunity to also have resources invested in, in, in innovation. And that will mean then we are able to move this country to the next level, courtesy of the women. <laughs> wow. Um, what else would you want to wrap up with your parting shot? Mm -hmm. um, my parting shot is that um, even as we have this conversation, mm -hmm. for me it will be that the women who have gone up there there is need to encourage mentorship mm -hmm. and very deliberate mentorship so that if we identify a resource, a talent, mm -hmm. then let us hold the hands of those who are coming up. Huh? If you have conversation with those who are starting, then you will hear them saying it's difficult to be a startup because penetrating the market mm -hmm. is very difficult. But there are people who've made it, you know, up there. So why don't we be very deliberate to hold the hands? So my call is for the women who've gone before us to just continue holding the hands. Some have done a very good job mm -hmm. and that we appreciate. But there is need to hold the, the hands of those who are coming up, you know, to ensure that we have more women, encourage mentorship and, and, and just supporting them to the level that they are also very stable. So that will be my number one call. But of course, my number two call, which is what I do and what I love doing, is let's focus on the family you know, uh, let's ensure that at the family level things happen right. Because if you're able to lay the correct foundations at the family level, we're able to establish a working, a sound value system mm -hmm. at the family level. That means a better society, an equal society, mm -hmm. so that when you're talking about uh, access, we're talking about also equity, you know, where we don't look at um, you're given the same resources like I am, but you're looking at what are some of the limiting factors that could limit you and how do we help you to come up so that we make the ground level. Oh. So yeah, those will be my parting shot for, 
for now. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. This is this was a wholesome conversation, you know. We've not even exhausted mm. half everything there is to talk about um, digital information technology for gender equality. Mm. But I feel like we have dug quite a bit yeah. and we are at a good we are, we are, we are at a good standing. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making time. So on the side, what are two things you can't leave the house without? <laughs> <laughs> okay, apparently, um, mm -hmm. because of the conversation we're having right now, I can't leave the house without my phone mm -hmm. and my laptop. <laughs> 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 yeah, I'll be stuck. I mean, I won't be able to do anything. Wow, you're thinking laptop and phone. Me, I'm always thinking my phone and I don't know what else. <laughs> But anyway, thank you so much for making time. It means a lot. Thank you for the insight you've given us about digital information and technology for gender equality. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. And I wish all the women out there happy International Women's Day and have a blast. <laughs> that was Maureen Chiang, Programs Coordinator, ICSSP. We have been having a wholesome conversation on digging it all that is digital invasion and technology for gender equality happy international women's day to all the women out there don't touch that dial val is coming back